Hey folks, welcome to Spacious Planning, I'm Deborah, and in this video I'm going to be talking through my 2024 planner and journal stack. I'm also going to have a look at last year's planners and journals, well they're kind of the same, look at what worked, what didn't, what I'm kind of swapping out for what, um, and yeah, talk about how I feel about all that. So I guess let's get started. So, um, let's do journals first because they're fairly quick. So, let me just move some of these out of the way and take a look at my journals. Now, this is not every notebook I use. I use, you know, notebooks to make notes when reading and studying and so on, which I've not included in this video, but these are my two actual journals. So I have a Leuchtturm Some Lines a Day five-year uh, planner, oh, five-year journal, I guess. Get those out of, out of shot. Um, which I've been using for, I'm into my third year of it. So I think if we look at the start of the year, I've only got two years in it, but I'm into my third year now, towards the end of the year. So this is brilliant. I'm really pleased I started it. It's been just a fantastic tool. So you could, there's lots of ways you could use it, right? The idea is you write a few sentences every single day for five years and you have like the same date in each year on a page. So you can look back eventually at five years of memories or whatever you're recording from the same day. Um, I just write a sentence or two about what I've been doing, how I'm feeling, nothing very deep. Um, I don't try and track stats or anything like that. But it's been really interesting, you know, looking back, times when my mood has been the same at the same time each year, or looking back on major life events. I mean, the past couple of years have been quite big years. I've, I moved house this year. I changed jobs last year. So looking back at all of that has actually been really interesting. So I'm obviously going to continue that until it finishes. So that's going to be in my stack for a couple more years yet. And then I have my sort of generic journal, which I've used this cover for, I'd say, more than 10 years now. And I just buy refills for it. Unfortunately, <laughs> so the shop that sells the refills has closed down and I'm really struggling to find anything that's exactly the same size and page weight and page count. So I will probably finish this. I have only just started it and I think I've got one more spare. So I might be able to stay in this through 2024, but I am going to have to find a replacement eventually. And this is for my kind of long form journaling and reflecting. So when I really want to sit and write a lot, really kind of pour my thoughts out, that's the journal I use. Okay, let's get into planners and let's start with, so this <laughs> monstrous thing is my 2023 stack. Let's run through it quickly and talk about what I'm bringing in in 2024 as well so we do them alongside each other i think so first up last year i slightly impulse bought an erin condren soft bound horizontal and as you can see there are a lot of empty pages i bought it for two reasons firstly it's beautiful i love the shiny pages i love the color I love how colourful the interior is, different colours through the month. It's gorgeous and I bought it thinking I would use it as my goal planner. As I've discussed in other blog posts and videos, I'm not doing very well with goal planning. I'm pretty much at this point just dropping all conventional goal planning. So this planner is gorgeous, but I didn't use it very much and I'm not replacing it with anything. That's just something that is going out of the stack. Next up, we have my, basically my main planner for this year was my Erin Condren hourly weekly. So let's take a look. Uh, let's find an empty week, which is quite hard to do at this point. 
I mean, this has been fantastic. I used this in 2022 as well. I love seeing all my appointments mapped out, my short personal to-do list. It lets me see the shape of my week. Most of the time this sits on a planner stand beside my desk, so I can just glance over and see what I've got going on, see when I've got downtime as well, you know. If you're kind of heads down in the middle of a stressful day, being able to glance over and go, well, today is full on, but tomorrow's a lot emptier, can be really helpful. I've loved this planner. I mean, I like Erin Condren. I like the paper. I love the coil bound binding. I love the interchangeable covers. So this is another Etta V cover, um, which you can sort of snap on and snap off and change out, which I love being able to do. I change it through the seasons. But, <laughs> so I, I kind of assumed I would be in this again for 2024, but I'm actually swapping it out and replacing it with the Sprouted Planner Hourly, which is new. They've not done an hourly before. This is the hourly layout in Sprouted. I'm swapping for a couple of reasons. So there's a lot I like about the Erin Condren, and I do think I'll miss the coil, I'll miss being able to swap out the covers. But this is just such a good layout. For me, one of the weaknesses of the Erin Condren is there's not a lot of uh, list space. And they've actually made it even smaller in 2024 because they've added habit trackers. So I was already kind of struggling for list space and then it got worse. This has much more generous list space, a bit of note space. And OK, obviously, the hourly spaces are smaller. <laughs> That's the compromise if you have more list space. But they're still pretty good. So that's why I'm swapping is purely for the weekly layout, really. Um, so we'll see how I get on. I don't usually use book bound planners. I love being able to flip my planner back on itself. But because my hourly spends like 95% of its time just propped up on a stand, I think it'll be OK. So we'll see how I get on with it, but I'm excited to get started in it, even though <laughs> I will miss all my lovely Erin Condren covers. I have this growing stack beside me of planners I've like put aside. In a minute, it's going to fall over with a horrible crash. We'll see what happens there. So the next two are work planners. I started 2023 just using a notebook for work. It'd help if it was the right way up and just drawing layouts in it. And then partway through the year, I switched to a So Typical Me hourly. Let's find a blank page again. Now, I'm not totally certain what I'm gonna do about my work planning yet. Obviously, both of these are unfinished, so my So Typical Me has a few months left to run, and I've still got some space in the notebook if I want it. And, the notebook is an Erin Condren one, so I could start switching out covers and stuff on that. So I at least kept <laughs> some of that in my life, which I would like to do. However, one thing that does appeal, my new daily, which I'll get to in a minute. I'm very excited about it. Comes with a weekly dashboard, which I don't really have a use for because for, for my weekly, I use the hourly layout. And this would be great for work. You know, I don't have a lot of work meetings, so that's buckets of room. Space for like planned to do's and then like writing what extra things I've done. I'm always a bit uneasy about putting work planning into my personal planner, but like I'd prefer to have it all in one. I'm just like, is it a bad idea to mix personal and professional? But it's something I'm considering doing. And it would mean it would be right there in this planner. I would then add work stuff to my day when needed. And I would basically be in one planner. I'd have an hourly as a dashboard for all my main planning would happen in one book, which would be really nice, especially because so the Sprouted Planner Daily, it comes in two volumes. So this is only six months. But it does mean it's it's not very thick. Well, I mean, it's still fairly chunky, but it's not a massive book. So it would be one relatively compact, relatively portable planner that contained pretty much everything. And that would be nice. 
So I still have to decide about that. I might, I might carry on using the notebook just to have some Erin Condren in my life still, but we'll see. I'll probably swap between things and try different things out. Now, this year I also used an Erin Condren compact vertical, which I think I'll talk about in a minute because <laughs> it's a bit, I have big feelings about this one. <laughs> Let's talk about the, the new planners I'm introducing. So we have the Sprouted Planner Monthly, which is a nice portable little book with some yearly overview pages, monthly spreads and notes room. This is also going to be propped up on a stand by my desk. This year in my hourly, I've been noting gratitudes in every day and like major wins for the month in note space in, in my Erin Condren hourly. But because I keep that open to the week, I don't actually see them much and it's easy to forget to write them. I think there would be benefit to having that constantly in my line of sight. So again, as a kind of pick me up, a kind of mood boost, having this up on a dashboard in my eye line will both, yeah, it'll boost mood, but it'll also remind me to do it. I think I'm going to add or well, try adding some colour coding to days to tell me just what my main activity for the day was. So not writing in meetings, but just add, you know, a colour for work, a colour for kind of social stuff and so on. So I'll try that as well, just to map out the shape of my month a little bit. I'm also going to use this book for my health tracking. And I'm going to try and use the note space for kind of dreams, visions, positive things I want to do. Um, so slightly inspired by Amanda of Amanda's Favourites. She has what she calls her positive pants planner. Um, slightly inspired by that. I'll link the video in the, in the description. Um, the idea is if this has my health info, which is the thing that I want to keep year on year, I only have to store a tiny little book rather than a massive planner. This is the theory. And it'll also have gratitudes and wins and probably some memories and some kind of positive things. So it's quite a nice thing to keep anyway. And then the other thing I'm adding is a daily. Now, I tend to use a daily list. So it's not like I've never done daily planning before. I'm trying the Sprouted Daily because, well, two reasons, really. First off, it's a daily that gives you your full weekend. So you get full days for Saturday and Sunday which is something I really want. Uh, it also has really flexible space. So there's room for micro journaling, just little bits of reflection or journaling, which is a big part of why I'm using a daily. You know, in terms of actual planning and productivity, I'd probably be fine just with a to-do list book or notepad, but the extra space and the zone space, I think will be good for journaling. But it is a bit of an experiment because I've not used the daily heavily before. I'm also, so I've also got the hourly planner and they both have this, where are we? Um, sort of reflection system and values and intentions work. I'm going to do that in the daily because if this does become sort of my everything planner, I think it makes sense to keep that together. So I've started filling out some of the prep work. I actually switched the reminders. So this was meant to be for quarterly reminders. I switched it for like areas, tasks I want to do in different areas, work on the house, stuff I want to learn about, that sort of thing. I'm really excited about this one. There's, there's a lot I like about this. I've done a full Sprouted Planner um, walkthrough video, which I'll link. So I'm not gonna go into huge detail with it now, but this is, I'm excited for the hourly layout, but I have been using an hourly for a while. This is the kind of big experiment that I'm really excited to get started on. And then we have the compact vertical from Erin Condren, which I actually bought this second hand just to try out. Now, this is a weird one <laughs> because I've not used it that heavily, right? If we look through it, we've got lots of blank months, blank dashboards, 
it may be in August I was using it fairly heavily. But there's a lot of weeks that are just completely empty. So actually looking through it now, maybe not as many as I thought. That's quite that's quite interesting because I thought I wasn't really using it. But actually I was just struggling to find a week that I haven't written in at all. Which is um informative. <laughs> but this is the planner. So I'm not really directly introducing anything in place of this. The daily planner kind of takes its place. I used to use this for a daily list, the things that I absolutely had to get done in the day. And the daily planner that I've got will replace that, but the daily planner has a lot more space and it's it's doing a lot more work. You know, my daily planner will include, yeah, the things I have to get done, but also my schedule, probably some journaling and reflection work, probably some kind of optional to-dos for the day and things like that. This planner, I reached for it every time I was really stressed out and overwhelmed because it's, so it's A5 size, it's really comp compact. You can't put a lot of to-dos in here. Like you, you physically can't overload yourself. So what I would do when I was stressing was get this and write only the things I absolutely had to do. Like the things where literally, if I don't get this done, the wheels are coming off my life. So I used it in the weeks around my house move. I reached for it every time I got overwhelmed by work and could feel my personal life. <laughs> things like house care and so on kind of getting fragmented. So although I didn't, I mean, I didn't use the monthly spreads or the yearly stuff or the notes pages or the dashboards. And I reckon I used less than half the weeks. But the weeks where I used it, it was kind of sanity saving. I, I don't want to exaggerate, but it really was. It became this habit. I'm panicking. I'm freaking out. We grab this planner and we we focus on the absolute essentials and let everything else go. And that was really, really helpful. So I am quite nervous to leave it behind. And although the daily will obviously have the list space room and let me show you what I'm thinking of doing in the daily to try and replace this. So each day in my new daily has this little space with three to do's up top. And I'm thinking that might be the replacement. If I put the three things I have to get done in the day or up to three things that I have to get done, that might kind of work the same way, but then I'm going to be looking at all this space. I'm feeling kind of judged by all this space in a weird way. So we'll see how it goes. I think, I think the daily is a good idea because I want to build more journaling and reflecting into my daily planning. And obviously, if you're going to do that, you have to have a daily planner. You need the space. But we'll see if if I get a couple of months into the year and I'm really missing having this to lean on, I could maybe pick one up in a sale for the rest of the year or something. Or I know Plum Paper do something very similar, so I could maybe buy a six month one from them to get me through the year or something like that. But yeah, so this is really weird. The planner I've used well, not least, because my goal planner <laughs> is the planner I used least. I basically didn't use it. But, the, you know, the planner that I've been very off and on with is it's the one I'm most emotional about leaving behind. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. So that was a quick run through my 2024 planner stack, which is, I mean, it's basically <laughs> these three from Sprouted Planner. Can you tell what my favorite cover was? These three from Sprouted Planner plus my journals are what I will be in for 2024. I'm so excited to get started. I'm quite impatient and wanting to, <laughs> wanting to move into the new planners at this point. I'd love to hear what you're going to be using for 2024. 
what has worked for you this year or what didn't work for you this year is there anything that you're feeling a bit sad or nervous about leaving behind you know any planner you're particularly attached to let me know in the comments i'd love to hear from you bye